what is going on everybody welcome to the torn your ring reloaded channel if you are new before y'all come and leave a comment make sure y'all go ahead and hit that like button go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you are new i would greatly appreciate it and we are here doing a special live stream on a sunday just like we did last week but this one is going to be a little bit more interesting compared to last week for those of you who don't know i did a live stream on dana white last week but this week we are going to do as it suggests in the thumbnail we about to do some straightening because people done lost their minds out here they out here talking bad about one of our icons and we just got to get to the bottom of this because this is just absolutely unnecessary and a bunch of foolishness going on with the so-called south of the bordarians as i've called them those of you who have been around for the last couple of days i gave a certain group of people a new nickname because i got tired of saying hispanic latino whatever so they got a new nickname and we're going to go in on this person today especially if you don't have a twitter account you probably didn't see this and even if you do have a twitter account you probably have seen this so there's a lot that's going to be covered a thread if you will is what we're going to be talking about and shout out to doom mega he said you a fool for that will smith pick like that's literally when i came up with the title for the stream that's literally the first picture that came to mind i said i gotta put that picture up there when will smith was you know had slapped chris rock at the oscars last year and shout out to charles briggs for the first dono of the day with the 20 dollars super chat he said b1 b1 to you as well thank you and i know that like I, I, I understand if I don't have a lot of people that'll come in here because I know people are probably watching the game right now. Y'all don't have to pretend. If you're watching the game, that's fine. This is one of those streams that's going to stay up and you'll be able to come back and check on it later and watch the playback. But let's see, who else do we have on here? We have Till Dog 12, Mike Mellis, John, Savion Draco Zero, j cage black light revelations oh and oh rob out when i'm done with this stream i'm gonna go ahead and um kick start up our project because we're trying to keep that on the low for right now and we'll jump right into that right after this let me go ahead and pull up the stream on my end <clears throat> So I can follow along when I got to switch the screen. Huh, let's see who else do we have in here. Dark Titan, what's going on? Like I said, I don't expect there's going to be a lot of people in here because, like I said, the game is on. I know that's probably got a lot of people's attention. That's why I kind of contemplated was I should have done the live around this time. But I said, let me go ahead and just do it anyway, because I have something else that has to be done right after this. And I didn't want to put this off another day. And it's hard for me to go live on any other day of the week except Friday. I couldn't go live yesterday because I was working. So otherwise, I would have did this live yesterday, which would have been perfect. And I even moved it up an hour so I could have enough time to do the other thing that I'm working on right after this. But this is going to be very interesting indeed. But like I said, if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and share the stream. I'll let the people know that we are live so they can go ahead and catch this work that I'm about to deliver to a one Pedro Gonzalez in real time. And for those of you who want to know, I did turn off the comment sections of that video that I did yesterday about MD. I'm going to just leave it like that because if I say his whole name, though his flock will probably come and flood this comment section i turned the comment sections off of that many of them are probably thinking oh yes we gotta win because he turned the comment sections off no i turned it off for two reasons one because y'all were trolling in there and i got tired of getting the notifications about your trolling leaving the same comments over and over again and the other one was because i i got tired of getting messages from my subscribers saying torian you know they are trolling like crazy under that video I know that. That's why I turned the comment section off. <laughs> so, yes, the comment section is off. So the only thing people can do right now is watch the video. That's it. And the thing is, you know, they turned the like and dis the 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 uh, dislike meter off. Well, on my end, I can actually see it when I go into the uh, 
to the back page. Well, how do you call it? The little backstage, whatever it is on YouTube. I forgot what it's actually technically called. When you go into that part, I can actually see the dislikes. That video right now has like, or last I checked, had 538 likes and like 200 plus dislikes. It's probably one of my most disliked videos in a long time time like they were very upset that i spoke against their king <laughs> just thought i would just giving people a heads up about that whole situation what's going on don p ben i'm gonna give it about three more minutes like we usually do when I'm going to start at like 510 so I can give people enough time to come on in. Because like I said, I don't expect a lot of people to come into this stream. It is what it is. RG Titan, what's going on? He said, I mean, come on. They had to know that MD's people were going to spread the miracle. We're trolling all over the place. <laughs> it is what it is. I knew what I was walking into when I decided to make that video. But it, hey, it just had to be done. It's crazy. I only that video was less than 10 minutes, and they got that mad over a less than 10 minute video. Lakeisha, what's going on? English over street. She said, I couldn't find the speed at first. I got the advance notice, but nothing else. Well, the point is, is that you're here now. That's all that matters. Shout out to Alana Trotman for the super chat from across the pond with the five dollar with the five pound uh don't know shout out to kid gravity beyond he's a b1 night rider checking in i'm glad that people are here like i said i don't expect a lot of people to come into this stream and i'm perfectly okay with that because i know the game is on right now it's the playoffs it's a big game going on i don't expect a lot of people to be here but i could not put this off another day <laughs> otherwise i would have been waiting a whole nother week to do this video or this stream what's going on terry Give it about two more minutes and we will begin. Kid Gravity said he does that crap every every year. You talking about MD? Like I said, I just have to use his name. I have to, have to use initials. Because I know if I say that name, if I just say the name, the algorithm probably will say, oh, he said it, and he's speaking bad about you. Let's come over and troll him. Or are you talking about who I'm about to talk about today? Because I'm not sure who, you were, who you're referring to. Dark Titan says, those dub S always mad when we tell the truth about their favorite dub S YouTubers. Right. Oh, today. Oh, oh, okay. Now I know who you're talking about. This is my first time I actually see him go, this person go on a rant like that, maybe because his stuff has never been shared onto my timeline before. And this time it was. So that's how I was able to see this. Alana said, I'm here, T, but the other half is watching the game next to me, but I have headphones. See, that's how I knew it was a lot of people watching the game today. I'm competing against the NFL right now. And of course, which I will definitely know I would lose that, but that's fine. It is what it is. And now it is officially 510. Hopefully I can get through this, uh, this stream in less than an hour, because like I said, I definitely am doing a collab right after, like literally jumping right into a collab right after this. So I don't need to turn the audio on for this one, but there was this person on Twitter by the name of pedro gonzalez pedro j gonzalez who on mlk day not his actual birthday but on the day the 16th which was almost a week ago it'll be a week ago tomorrow posted up this rather scathing thread talking about dr king and you know pedro gonzalez will fall into that category of you know brown people or you know how they like to try to do the black and brown thing after y'all get through this you will understand why that black and brown thing does not work alana said who was it with i'm not telling you who was with that's a surprise but i think that this is my first time actually doing a collab with this person but you'll have to wait and see 
after you know when it's done but yeah this pedro gonzalez person and i actually did some research this person was a frequent visitor of fox news so that was a red flag right there but he went on this long rant on M on mlk day just talking about how mlk cheated on his wife i'm like oh my god how many times are we going to hear that one we hear that all the time and it's crazy because they these are some of the same people that will always hold him hold dr king up in some high regard but we knew it was fake because they always do this and then you have some tethering divestors that do the same thing it was this one haitian chick who pretty much was saying the same thing that this guy was saying. I don't know if she said it before or after him, but it's the same thing over and over and over again, basically saying, oh, because he cheated on his wife, he doesn't deserve to be celebrated. Well, if that's not the pot calling the kettle black, because let's not forget who had statues erected of them who should not be celebrated. Let's talk about how Christopher Columbus, a whole conquistador, as far as I'm concerned, conquered nations and got a whole day. Now, this post got 3.3 million views since he since he posted it. 3,652 retweets, 1,330 quote tweets, 15,900 15, plus likes. DSB said he'd be on, on Facebook trolling. So, yeah, this is this is something that he just typically does. But what is getting what's crazy to me is that this guy was able to go on this whole little rant, this whole menstrual rant with a bunch of misinformation and Twitter never took the tweet down. The tweet is still up. This is still fresh. This is not a screenshot. This is on his page. Today, as I'm talking to you right now, but oh, I share a tweet from from Professor Black Truth's moment of truth about Akon. And I get a 12-hour ban for hateful conduct. Again, this is Elon Musk's Twitter, y'all. The one that's supposed to be freedom of speech. That's why I'm going to need black people to stop peddling the stuff that PC people say all the time. It don't work for you. It don't work for us. Well, I'm sure if you bootleg hard enough, it might. But then again, I'm not sure. But enough with that. Let's go through the thread. He starts off by saying MLK cheated on his wife with 40 women. Is there any proof of that? May have fathered a child with a mistress, was funded by communists, laughed as his friend violated a girl in the same year King won the Nobel Peace Prize and inaugurated diversity, equity, and inclusion. Happy MLK Day. And then attached it to this link that I don't even trust. This guy put one, two, three, four lies in one tweet and passed it off as if it was true. I wish Pedro Gonzalez had some people in high regard from within his community on the same level or maybe even better than Dr. King that we could run a smear campaign on. But we can't run a smear campaign on, on a phantom, on people that don't exist or we, or we could care less about. I would call this flattery, but it's an insult. Let's continue. And let me start clicking on because he just went, he went on this endless rant. He said, I didn't have enough characters to describe to describe how verifiably terrible and evil MLK is in a single tweet. Give me a break. And this was in response to someone saying a serial plagiarizer as well, basically trying to imply that Dr. King doesn't have a single solitary thought in his head that's original. That everything that he put out there was from someone else's thoughts and apparently didn't give them credit for it. See, this is why we have to... This is why you, we have to check these people, because if they get away with this long enough and you don't check them, then 
pedal it enough, pedal the lie enough, people will start to believe it. They figure, oh, we've already spoke in good graces about Dr. King for all these years. I'm tired of doing it. Let's go ahead and throw some dirt on his name. Mind you, this man has been dead since the 60s. This man has been dead longer than this Pedro guy has been alive. Mike Miller Johnson says, no evidence. Does he have proof of a birth records or anything? No, he has none of that. He just put all of this out here. And when you question it, him and his flock are just going to try to check you, much like when it came to that video I did yesterday on MD. Because that's all they'll do. These are the type of people that don't know how to debate, nor would you really want to debate them because they'll be speaking all over the place to try to throw you off your game. He goes on to say every right wing conspiracy theory about King is not only true, but the truth is worse than the people understand from his concrete connections to communism through Stanley Levison and Clarence Jones, among others, in the web of affairs that King had across the country. And notice again, he's holding up who he's holding up every right, every right wing conspiracy theory. So already he has a bias because I bet you if all the stuff came out from so-called left wing conspiracy theory, he probably wouldn't believe it. He goes on to say it might be unpopular to say this now on the right, given how the FBI has become so politically left wing in a sense. But King actually deserved to be surveilled and exposed. Then he went on to talk about this statue. He said the hideous monument in, in Boston is actually extremely appropriate for two reasons. Well, I've, we've already deemed that this thing is hideous, but not for the reasons he probably is going to say why it is. He said when King's wife confronted him about his affairs and absence from home, he just told her to go have affairs of her own. The Boston Monument depicts the quote-unquote embrace they shared when King won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964, the same year he laughed and watched his friend violate a girl. Again, this guy is on Twitter and he's being allowed to spread misinformation. Again, allowed to spread misinformation about a person that they claim to love so much this is proof right here that the people that claim they love dr king so much do not because you don't love someone and then put something out here like this and then allow it to stay up for over almost a week he speaks as if he was there the way that he's putting these tweets out there, he's talking as if he was present during all of what he's claimed. See, Alana, we were on the same wavelength. You just said it right there. Was he there? No, he was not there. He probably didn't talk to one single person that knew Dr. King. He just putting out here what he said, right wing conspiracy theory. That's right there should have stopped everyone dead in their tracks and knew that this guy was talking a bunch of BS. This is what he's going off of. Every right wing conspiracy theory. That is what he's basing his rant on. No facts. Of course, he'll say that they're facts, but they're not. But every right wing conspiracy theory. Theory. That's what he's basing his his talking points on. Let's continue. Much of what I wrote in the article above, because that piece that's up there, that link that he put up on there is from his page, the contrasubstack.com. He said, much of what I wrote in the article above draws from the work of two left wing scholars, David Garrow and Murray Friedman. Garrow won a Pulitzer Prize for a biography of King in 1987. Friedman was executive director of the Philadelphia chapter of the American Jewish Committee. 
So critics of people like me who care about King's real and unlawful legacy have to reckon with the fact that most of the evidence against King comes from fellow travelers, people who have defended him and were or are otherwise allied with them. I'm going to need names. Because he's just putting out anything and hoping that it sticks. I'm going to need names. He says, my article is having the intended effect. And this is what someone wrote. I'm not going to repeat it, but it says someone should. Well, you know. There you go. But look at what he just said. My article is having the intended effect. In other words, he posted this threat. I mean, this thread and this article with no intention but to get the responses such as this. In other words, he's doing this all for attention. But it's still misinformation. So why is it still up here? And they wonder why I have come up with the mantra of I feel nothing. He says the fundamental difference between all those men and King is that they were good and decent men and King was not. Let's talk about the men that they're referring to. This person says, I get it. But this feels eerily similar to the left's take on Christopher Columbus, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, etc. That despite doing something world changing and incredibly good, we should leave him out in the doorsteps of history for the evils he committed. So this person mentioned Columbus, Washington, Jefferson. Now, we are all familiar with all three of these individuals and the role they played, especially on anti-black hatred. But then he said the fundamental difference between all those men and King is that they were good and decent men and King was not. So we're going to pretend that Christopher Columbus did not violate an entire, almost an entire nation of people and brought their population down millions from violations, murder, theft, starvation, boatloads of other atrocities we're not going to pretend that george washington did not own slaves to run his plantation and don't get us started on thomas Jeff jefferson sally hemmings anybody any um anybody these guys all are documented violators especially the 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 columbus and jefferson for sure i'm sure washington did as well but those that first and third one, oh, definitely. But this guy says they were good and decent men and King was not. Again, misinformation, but the tweet is still up. The thread is still active. So let's see. He says, if you're angry about me citing leftist historians who are pro-King, you're going to hate learning about the time King's closest friend and successor as president of SCLC confirmed the FBI claims about King's degeneracy and that person being Ralph Abernathy. I didn't I'm I didn't stop reading anything. I'm just looking at the chat to see what y'all talking about. Because the chat's moving pretty, it's getting pretty, it's getting a little bit more active now. DSB said, I wish they would stop saying Abraham Lincoln's freed the slaves because that's a lie. Exactly. It that's a huge lie right there that has been debunked so many times. Exactly, kid. Gravity said, we don't even bring up Abernathy. Look at who they're using as a source. I won't be surprised if this person threw in what's his name? Uh, the one that the, the academy loves to talk about so much. Uh, I forget. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all know exactly who I'm talking about. Tia the you says the sad to the desperate need for attention. How many followers does he have? He has a lot of followers. 
He has a lot. He has 133,600 uh, 133, plus followers. And that is exactly how you get a base like that is when you put out not crap like this. That's th thank you. Bayard Rustin. Thank y'all chat. I couldn't think of his name. Bayard Rustin. That's another person that they love to bring up. He said, Ralph Abernathy was King's closest friend during the civil rights era and the man King picked to succeed him as leader of the SELC. When he published a book detailing King's depravity, people couldn't really deny the claims. They said they just said he was jealous. And like I said, it makes you wonder, what does Pedro Gonzalez stand to gain from all of this that he's putting out there. Like, what does he really stand to gain from doing this? And he said, anyway, if the article enlightened you or hurt your feelings, you can subscribe here for more. So he basically was doing this to promote his raggedy uh, POS. In other words, if I was to click on this article, I probably couldn't even read it. I would have to pay to um, read it, which I definitely wouldn't do. And then he puts up a thread, like he puts up images, like, I guess, of people responding to him as well, such as this one. It said, this is why I'm for, um, for a huge border wall with wires. Someone has said, this is what Latino jealousy looks like. And then and then insatiable need for white validation tweets look like look like then it said if it wasn't for mlk you'd still be in mexico with a west shirt dodging bullets and machetes from the cartel roberto someone says why is hispanic disrespecting the very men who was the reason he's even allowed in america this one said these mexicans and some you know some other tweets so he's basically po posting how people responded to him and and rightfully so And the rest of it is just people like responded to him. The, the, the thread is pretty much um, pretty much over. But the point of the matter is of the whole thing is the fact that this guy was able to get away with posting on Twitter the, all of this misinformation. I post a link that's just sharing thoughts and views about an individual that had no malice intent behind it. And I get a 12 hour ban off of the platform for 12 hours. See, you said we need to study that term friend. So many people said they were friends with King and Malcolm. We know they want clout. Exactly. Uh, that term, that word is used too loosely amongst a lot of people. And it's given too loosely to people who don't deserve it. Yeah, but let's see. This is that Pedro Gonzalez right here. And it says that he's out of a place called Hyperborea, Ohio. Never heard of it. Rob, if you're still in the chat, he's in your state. I don't know any if there's anybody else who's in the chat right now who's from Ohio, but that's where he's from, according to his pin location. That's where he's from. But I'm not going to go down his page like you can just look at this tweet right here and see exactly what type of person he is. And honestly, the reason why he did this is because he knew that posting this on that day with this take, it would garner him so many views. And you know what? It definitely did. I know I said I wasn't going to go down, but let's just see for a second what his other stuff is looking like. So he pinned this one at the top. Keep in mind, this one has a has 3.3 million views on it. If you're on Twitter, now you can actually see the views of tweets that have been put out. And let's just keep, you know, going down and down and down and down. His other tweets, why they have some interaction and some engagement. They don't match up anywhere near to what that tweet did. So 
there you have it. That was his mission. And he had to disparage a dead black man in order to do it. Sounds vaguely familiar to a few other people and what they do when it comes to us. Let's just go ahead and disparage a whole bunch of black people that had some kind of a status and were out speaking on behalf of black people so we can get our clout up. And it doesn't even just have to be people like MLK. It could be entertainers. Just post a quote unquote hot take and then post some crap like this and watch the numbers fly because they know that if we can do that, we're going to either get people that are going to hate our guts or they're going to love us. There really is no in between. I wonder how many followers he gained from this tweet, from this thread. Probably a lot. Based proleta proletariat said Clay Travis talks trash about LeBron James all the time. Yeah, see, that's the thing. They have to talk. They that's their niche because they know their audience love it. Their audience ain't gonna say nothing because they can't articulate what they want to say. So they lean on a person like that to do it and they keep talking about it over and over again and they know what gets them views they could be talking a bunch of bs and not believe a word that comes out of their own mouth but if they know it can gain them views and it can latch itself to the algorithm that's, that's just what they're going to do these people aren't dumb pedro gonzalez is a piece of is is a pos but i'm sure he's not dumb he knew exactly what he was doing when he posted this because look at what day he posted it on. He didn't even, he wasn't, I'll say this, he wasn't even smart enough to post it on his birthday, which was the day before. But then again, maybe he was because he knew that, you know, I could post it on his actual birthday, but it may not get that much traction because it's not the day that they celebrate it. So let me wait 24 hours and post it on the day that it's acknowledged by the government on a federal level and then go on my rant and post up my link. So this was nothing more than a scathing hit piece to promote his raggedy website. That's all it was. Cause he said, make sure that you, if you like me or hate me to go ahead and subscribe so you can read some more of my crap. He did that. As a teaser, this thread was a teaser to get people to go and read from the site that you have to make sure to pay for in order to read. That's all it was. I don't I've never been to his website. I don't plan on going to it. So I don't know what else is on there. I couldn't tell you. But really, that's all this was. That's all this was. Let me see what y'all talking about in the chat. MD Williams says he doesn't care about the truth. He definitely does it. But then again, a lot of people in his position don't. They said none of these clan servitors care about the truth. Exactly. Dark Titan says Steven loves to wear women's clothing. Crowder, yeah, I was watching the amazing Lucas do a stream about him. Well, it was other people as well. And he had showed that clip of him wearing that, that dress. And I'm like, okay, the kin of Mrs. Doubtfire, I see. DSB says, I'll rather read a children's book before I read the nonsense he's talking about. So would I. That's actually something more entertaining. I might learn something from that too. Janessa says, I'm surprised he got any followers. I'm not. I'm not. People love stuff like this. Kid Grady said, let's go in on a Mexican leader on CDM if we can find one. But see, the thing is, I don't even have all the energy to even do something like that because I don't care. I don't care. However, when you do something like this, you, you will get called out. That's why I said more people need to call this kind of stuff out. One thing that I will say that is a flaw that black people have, and I've noticed this when I since me even starting to do my commentaries, even a few years ago, is that too many people 
love to tell me, oh, just ignore it. Don't bother it. It's this, is that, why even go? The thing is, if I ignore it, this kind of stuff gets peddled out into the mainstream, and then that's when it becomes reality. Just imagine if we were just to ignore what Ron DeSantis is recently doing right now in Florida when it comes to black history. Imagine if we just that sat back, you know what? I'm not going to talk about it. Why? I mean, you know, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I don't want to be that guy. I hate when people say that, too. I don't want to be that guy. Basically, what you're telling me is you don't want to rub certain people the wrong way who need to be rubbed the wrong way. Because they're not going to sit back and not do and not do something like this. Exactly based, there has to be pushback. It has to be. This is me pushing back on this. Granted, I don't have the biggest platform, but I do have a platform. Kid Greg said, ignoring got us in trouble. Exactly. Imagine if we all had the mindset, you know, if our ancestors had the mindset, well, the ones of a certain generation who could have did more but didn't had the mindset of how we are today could you imagine the position we could be in right now besides i'm gonna be honest with you i actually love when i get the opportunity to push back i think it's also a thing of think that people probably aren't too aware of their history so they don't know how to push back and shout out to Jerome Davis for being a member for seven months. What's good with you? So, yes, we have to push back on this type of rhetoric. And as crazy as it sounds, the collab that I'm doing is going to be doing is going to be another instance where we're pushing back against more rhetoric. But I'm not going to go any further into what it's about when y'all see the video and who I'm collabing with, you'll understand what I mean when I said in this very moment right here. So we have to push back against everybody. It's literally us against the world. It's, it's us against people like Pedro Gonzalez, who is a South of the Bordarian or a descendant of one, at least. It's us against, you know, the Asian community. It's us against PC for sure. It's us against everybody. Even those in the diaspora. We are dealing with their nonsense as well. Peep how I did on my live stream on Friday, how you had that black man named Mama Da Dualo who shot three black men because he quote unquote hated black people. So we got a lot of enemies. And we have to find a way to deal with that. That's why in the, in the thumbnail I said it's time for some straightening. Because trust and believe, this doesn't begin and end with Pedro Gonzalez, not by a long shot. Janessa said, do you think we need to boycott certain companies to get things done? I think we need to do that plus a whole lot more. It's good, you know, you can boycott something, but how long do boycotts traditionally last, at least in this day and age? We got to be realistic here. We need to have something in place that's long lasting. Again, a lot of this stuff is ramping up because I believe that black Americans in particular have found our footing. We found our voice. And one of them is reparations. It's like ever since reparations became a talking point and literally started to ramp up and get into the places that it should be, or at least in front of the eyes that it should be, everybody has wanted to take a dig at us at every which way possible. And they're seeing we're not backing down. Eventually, they're going to tire themselves out. They're going to run out of steam. They're going to run out of gas. And that's going to be it.
when they go after our ancestors, we go after this people in glass houses. Well, here's the thing, Mr. West. Like I had said earlier, I think someone has said something along the lines of what you did. I probably would if I actually knew who they, who, who their who their Dr. King was. I, I could ask Pedro Gonzalez this question. I would ask him this. Who was your equivalent of a Dr. King as far as people in your community? Who was your equivalent to a Malcolm X? That way I can write scathing things about them. Oh, that's right. You don't have any. So I can't. Looks like my Twitter fingers are going to be able to rest another day. Y'all said Cesar Chavez. <laughs> JK said El Chapo. <laughs> And even then, does Cesar Chavez have a, a nationally fed, federal holiday named after him? Because I don't see it on my calendar. I'm just saying. DSM Sinister and Nuri Martinez is here, Dr. King. Oh, God. Don't get me started on her. What's up, Dewan B? He said, Cesar Chavez helped a small group of Mexicans, and that was it. Uh, compared to what Dr. King did. But like I said, Pedro Gonzalez is probably, and he's definitely envious. He's definitely jealous. And I get it. Okay, I get it. I don't understand it. It's a bit weird, but okay, whatever. Calm your tits. When you wake up in the morning, should you have a mirror that is actually clean or one at all that's not cracked, you will still wake up and look like the dusty, busted sack of potatoes that you look like the day before. And you will still be a failure and a scumbag like you were the week before. That's why I said I can't wait for them, them uh, for us to get our tangibles because we are, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to flex as hard as I possibly can and not in the way people would traditionally think that a collective of black people would, but I'm going to make sure that a lot of people feel my my fury. And I highly suggest that if you qualify and that day comes for you, you do the same thing. After all, I would say that we deserve it. For sure, without the shadow of a doubt. Unnamed says, I'm going to make a video on MD later and I'm going to completely dismantle him. Good luck with your comment section because I'm telling you right now, they're going to flock right on over just like they did mine. I had to turn mine off because of the uh, unrelentless trolling that was going on in there. Again, like between me getting notifications about all the stuff they were saying and my subscribers DMing me. And sending me comments saying Torian on other videos, Torian, you may need to like check your comment section or block some people. I listen, I could not do all that blocking. That would have took too long. So you know what? I just turned the comment sections off. So if y'all want to watch that video about him, you can watch it. You just can't comment. And trust me, they probably gonna think, oh, he's running scared because he turned the comment sections off. No, if I wanted to turn them back on or leave them on. I would have left them on and just watch y'all go back and forth in the comment section. But who wants to watch several different people write the same type of comment of, oh, this person's a genius. He's intellectually smart. You're stupid. One person, <laughs> let me tell y'all this, because, you know, um, let me stop sharing the screen right quick. Let me tell y'all this. I saw some wild comments under that video yesterday. I saw some ridiculous comments under that video that I did about him yesterday. But one of the most craziest ones I saw was 
you should be thanking Mark Dice because you doing that video on him is probably the most views you're going to get on any video. When I said, when I saw that, I said, are they for real? They must not know about the video that I did about George Santos last week that got, that's currently sitting at like 166,000 plus views and counting right now, making it my, one of my most watched videos this, um, in a very, very, very long time as far as, uh, no, no, let me rephrase that. This is the first video in a while that has crossed 100,000 views and rather fast too. It pretty much went viral. But they actually said, this is probably the most views you've ever gotten on any video on your channel. You should be thanking him. So anybody who saw the comments before I turned the comment section off knows exactly how wild it got in that comment section. But I had to turn them off. Alon Trauma said, you made a comment under a YouTuber I watched and they removed it. Uh, do you mind telling me which one it is? Unnamed says some of these comments are by. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I wouldn't be in the least bit surprised. I wouldn't be in the least bit surprised if some of them were bots because some of them were, even spoke like it too. I want to see if um Alana's going to tell me who the YouTuber was because I'm curious because I'm I leave comments on people's pages sometimes and you know it is what it is, but I don't know who it was. It was about the snow. Oh. Was it a comment that I recently left yesterday? Was it a comment I left yesterday? Okay, let me go and check right quick. They didn't remove the comment. I just went on look in there and look. It's still there. He even hearted the comment. It's still there. I can see it. Um, you said you read it and then it disappeared. No, I'm looking at the comment right now. Like I just went onto my phone and pulled it up. It's right there at the top. So I don't know what happened on your end, but the comment is still there. And I definitely have a commentary coming about him too. I listen, I have so many update videos coming this week. It's not even funny. I went in with some of the like some of the recording and videos that I did in the last couple of days because so much was rolling on in. But it's so many update videos that y'all got coming this week. I probably have enough to do at least one update a day for the for the whole week. It's so much stuff. But anyway, I don't want to drag this on any longer than I had to. Like I said, I wanted to keep this under an hour because like I said, I have a collab video that I have to do like right after this. I need to send the person the link so we can go ahead and just jump right into it and get that knocked out. But shout out to everybody that came through again. I'm, I know it's a game going on and I'm actually surprised that many more people started to come in, but I guess, you know, YouTube said, Oh, just get to the point. Once you start, once that happens, then we'll start sending the stuff out to people and they'll come right on it. But I'm glad y'all came in. Like I said, this is a special stream, so it'll stay up so y'all can go back and watch this and see what you missed. If you wasn't here since the beginning, if you are, this is your first time seeing it and you didn't catch the live, you'll be able to catch the entire thing. But with that being said, y'all enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Of course, I'll be back on here tomorrow giving y'all the three videos a day as usual. And we will go from there. Until then, y'all have a good night. Good evening. Be 